Hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a blessed way of life. And Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords and will reign forever. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Now we're continuing our study of the book of First Enoch, and we find ourselves today having finished the section of the Watchers, the Fallen Angels, and we begin a section called the Parables. We're going to begin in chapter 37, and we'll probably review chapter 37, chapter 38 today. So let's read together chapter 37. If you do not have the book of Enoch in front of you, I have placed the link in the description below this video so that you may be able to read along with us. Chapter 37 and verse 1. The second vision which he saw, the vision of wisdom, which Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam saw. And so as we have pointed out in the past, you can see from the creation of Adam, we only have seven generations later, and we have this man Enoch. So Enoch lived before the flood, and he was alive at the same time Noah was. He was alive at the same time that Adam was. And so one could say that what Enoch had to say and relay to us would be very important information. Verse 2, this is the beginning of the words of wisdom, which I lifted up my voice to speak and to say to those which dwell on earth. Hear ye men of old time and see ye that come after. So he's speaking to the men in his day and he's speaking for all of those who will come after. So he says, hear ye men of old time and ye that come after the words of the Holy One, which I will speak before the Lord of Spirits. It were better to declare them only to the men of old time. But even from those that come after, we will not withhold the beginning of wisdom. Till the present day, such wisdom has never been given by the Lord of Spirits as I have received according to my insight. So basically what Enoch is saying is, look, no man has ever heard the things that I am about to tell you. He goes on by saying, according to the good pleasure of the Lord of spirits, by whom the lot of eternal life has been given to me. Now three parables were imparted to me, and I lifted up my voice and recounted them to those that dwell on the earth. So we're going to spend the next week or so looking at these three parables and what it is Enoch has to say and how we can discover together that they're not only given to us in the book of Enoch, but they're recorded in the Holy Scriptures that we have as well. Chapter 38, the first parable. When the congregation of the righteous shall appear and sinners shall be judged for their sins and shall be driven from the face of the earth, and when the righteous one shall appear before the eyes of the righteous, whose elect works hang upon the Lord of spirits, and light shall appear to the righteous and the elect who dwell on the earth, where then will be the dwelling of the sinners? And where the resting place of those who have denied the Lord of spirits? So basically Enoch is telling us here that he has seen a vision of the end of days. He says, the congregation of the righteous shall be present. The sinners shall be judged for their sins. They will be driven from the face of the earth. The righteous one, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, will appear before the eyes of the righteous. Light will appear on the righteous and the elect who dwell on the earth. And so even though he's telling us what is to come, he begins this question, where then, at this time in history, where will be the dwelling of the sinners? And where the resting place of those who have denied the Lord of spirits? They won't be upon the earth because he told us that they will be driven from the face of the earth. The book of Peter tells us that there will be a new earth and a new heaven, and man will live upon the new earth. Only the righteous will live upon the new earth. The sinner will be driven from the face of the earth. So where will the sinner be driven to? He goes on and he says, it had been good for them if they had not been born. Does that sound familiar? Jesus said that about Judas in Matthew chapter 26, verse 24. It would be better had Judas not been born. Verse 3, when the secrets of the righteous shall be revealed and the sinners judged. What could the secrets of the righteous be alluding to? 
Could it be all the private prayers no one else sees but have been recorded in the documentation of heaven? Could it be the tears that have been shed and have been kept as trophies on our behalf? Could it be all the good deeds that have been done and as Jesus commanded us, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing? And so there have been many anonymous righteous acts that have occurred throughout history on behalf of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Could these be those secrets? I don't know, but what it indicates to us is that the same time the sinners are being judged, the secrets of the righteous will be revealed. And if this is what that is alluding to, then the same times the sinners are being judged and punished, the righteous are being judged and rewarded. It continues, and the godless will be driven from the presence of the righteous and the elect. So again, there's going to be a separation from the wheat from the chaff. Again, a quote from Jesus. It says in verse 4, from that time, those that possess the earth shall no longer be powerful and exalted. This is talking about presidents, kings, queens, the rich and mighty. It says they will not be able to behold the face of the holy. Why? Because their entire lives has been centered around their success, their power, their fame, their fortune, their material possessions, and their money. And yet the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 tells us without holiness, no man shall see God. So it's only the holy that will see God. And these rich and mighty will not be able to behold the face of the holy. For the Lord of spirits has caused his light to appear. So it would be like us trying to gaze into the sun. It's absolutely impossible to do. And so will it be for the unrighteous on that day. For the Lord of spirits has caused his light to appear on the face of the holy, righteous, and elect. The Lord of spirits has caused his light to appear on the face of the holy, righteous, and elect. You remember when Moses came down from the mountain, he had to put a veil over his face because his face shone forth the brightness and the glory of God and men couldn't look upon him. And so the same as without holiness, no man shall see God. They will not be able to see his light. They will not be able to see his glory, even upon the face of his servants. It says in verse five, then shall the kings and the mighty perish and they will be given into the hands of the righteous and holy. So all of those who think that they're so powerful, high and mighty upon this earth will find that they are as the beggar on that day. And thenceforward, verse 6, none shall seek for themselves mercy from the Lord of spirits, for their life is at an end. Chapter 39, and it shall come to pass in those days that elect and holy children will descend from the high heaven, and their seed will become one with the children of men. So we're going to go to heaven to be judged and rewarded, and then we're going to descend with the Lord Jesus Christ back to planet earth to reign as kings and priests under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years upon this earth, better known as the millennial reign. And in those days, in verse 2, Enoch received books of zeal and wrath and books of disquiet and expulsion. And mercy shall not be accorded to them, saith the Lord of spirits. And in those days, a whirlwind carried me off from the earth. And it set me down at the end of the heavens. And there I saw another vision, the dwelling places of the holy and the resting places of the righteous. Here mine eyes saw their dwellings with his righteous angels. So the angels will be together with us. And of course, they have served the Lord faithfully throughout time. And how often we have thought about living in eternity with the men and women of the Bible that we have come to grow familiar with. But we're going to live with Michael the Archangel, Gabriel, and these other angels that have been mentioned here in the book of First Enoch. And we will be working with them to carry out the decrees of holiness and righteousness that God calls each of us to live. He says, they petitioned and interceded and prayed for the children of men. So the angels are praying on our behalf. They're interceding on our behalf. And righteousness flowed from before them as water. Mercy like dew upon the earth. 
Thus it is amongst them forever and ever. And in that place, mine eyes saw the elect one of righteousness and of faith. That's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I saw his dwelling place under the wings of the Lord of spirits. And righteousness shall prevail in his days. This is the 1,000 year millennial reign. And the righteous and elect shall be without number before him forever and ever. And all the righteous and elect before him shall be strong as fiery lights. And their mouth shall be full of blessing. And their lips extol the name of the Lord of spirits. And righteousness before him shall never fail. And uprightness shall never fail before him. There I wished to dwell. Enoch says, I don't want to go any further. Place me here and leave me here. But I suspect that Enoch is going to continue in his journey. But he says in verse 8, There I wished to dwell, and my spirit longed for that dwelling place. I share Enoch's heart. My spirit longs for that dwelling place. Does your spirit long for that dwelling place for him? He continues, and there heretofore hath been my portion, for so has it been established concerning me before the Lord of spirits. In those days, I praised and extolled the name of the Lord of spirits with blessings and praises, because he has destined me for blessing and glory according to the good pleasure of the Lord of spirits. Isn't this what Isaiah said? He said, you knew me before I was even born. While I was in my mother's womb, verse 10, for a long time, my eyes regarded that place and I blessed him and praised him saying, blessed is he and may he be blessed from the beginning and forevermore. And before him, there is no ceasing. He knows before the world was created what is forever and ever and what will be from generation unto generation. Those who sleep not bless thee. They stand before thy glory and bless, praise, and extol, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of spirits. He filleth the earth with spirits. Again, another quote directly quoted by Isaiah. And here my eyes saw all those who sleep not. They stand before him and bless and say, Blessed be thou, and blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever. And my face was changed, for I could no longer behold. Do you see the paradox in this vision? Such blessing, grandeur, wonder, and awe, and at the same time such fear and fright, such devastation and destruction? We see a clear difference in what has been promised and is awaiting the sinner and what has been promised and awaiting the righteous. And we can't just read words like these and walk away. We have to bow our head low, really examine our lives and consider, are we ready to meet our maker? Are we ready to meet the Almighty? Will he find favor in the lives that we've lived, in the surrender that we've offered to his son, the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it well with our souls, friends? I pray that you will spend this day considering those very questions. Now, may your walk with Jesus be blessed today. May his spirit rise up within you and cause you to do great and wondrous things in his name. And may your eyes be open to those that are searching for truth so that you can offer them the goodness and pleasure of his mercy and compassion. Now, I love you, friends. I'm so thankful that you spent a few moments with us this morning. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.